it's me, Mr. MLG, here from Mighty Lancer Games. Can you all hear me? Hi, everyone. We forgot to plug the camera back in after we'd been doing something else. Wait. You unplugged it. I forgot to plug the camera in after we'd been doing something else. <laughs> Hi, uh, how is everybody? This fine, fine evening. This evening I'm going to be whacking some paint on this thrasher snail. Yes, we delicately painting them today, being really precise and yeah. you're very high up. <laughs> you higher up than normal? Yeah, I normally, I normally lower it down on a Monday and a Wednesday. It's uh, it's less comfortable, but you can see my charming face and all the better. Is that better? Can you see me now? So we're going to begin with, for our thrasher snail, we're going to begin with some heavy black green from Vallejo. And this is going from to Vallejo. be Vallejo. And this is going to be for the body of the snail. Thank you for subbing, resubbing, Tony. It's really, really super kind. Thank you. They've changed. I don't know why. I don't know if Mr. MLG's done it before the stream or whatever, but um, the dashboard has changed. I changed nothing. And um, I can't find anything now. <laughs> <sighs> it's very annoying. I changed nothing. I only did the uh, settings that I know how to do. Didn't press anything that I don't know what it is. We want, sure. want our uh, our green to be a little bit grey, so we'll mix in a bit of this slate grey. Panda wants to know what you've all painted today. I've uh, I've undercoated the crocodile. Mm -hmm. Why? Because uh, it's a dire crocodile. And it's going to be a fantasy creature. Oh. Charmed and some RCL stuff. We've been at the shop, so we've not painted anything. Not yet. Painted nothing. Lots of making, though. Mm. <laughs> Don't know if he said it quite like that. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been he, slightly he creepy. <laughs> Great. I have a question that I always ask you all. Uh, can you hear the music? Is the music too loud? Can you hear it at all? Because I can't hear it. I can't hear it now. But I could hear it pre-stream. I can't hear it now. But according to my little bars that bounce up and down when we talk and stuff, it, it's, it should be quite loud. <laughs> so I don't know. And it's just like, oh, good, thanks, Tony. Thank you, Susan. If it does get too loud, you'll have to tell me. I painted a super secret thingy. This is really cool. Also, need advice on how to base it, but I can't ask because it'll be a giveaway. I know, yeah. I, I did, uh, I keep going like, am I sure it's not on my desk before I take a picture of this other thing? No, you can't ask about that. <laughs> Don't mention that thing. <laughs> Uh, it's very difficult, isn't it? It is. Mine's fairly safe because I haven't finished uh, painting it. You haven't started painting it. <laughs> I have. It's, have, it's, have it's, it's there, look, it's there. <laughs> it's off camera, but it's there. Oh, oh, it's, oh you've put some undercoat on a bit cool. a bit. It, yeah. It's not even all of it. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we're not talking about it because it might be like a giveaway thing that might happen. Yeah. It might be slipped out. Oh, just that thing. Tony's been making a 15th, 16th century fantasy sewer section for a diorama. As awesome. you do, as you do. <laughs> awesome. Still trying to fix my dashboard, by the way, just in case you're wondering. Have you got any hobby related news? You've been opening uh, Magic the Gathering, a thousand dollar 
30th <laughs> anniversary <laughs> box. We did, we did, we did. Would you like it, to tell us anything about that? It was, uh, it was really, really cool to open what? something that I would never dream of paying that much money for. Uh, yeah, it was, it was awesome. And, and we got some pretty good cards. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm happy with the cards that we got. The, well, what uh, do you actually reckon to it for a thousand dollars? Oh, uh, yeah, it's definitely, uh, unless, unless you get one of the, like, super rare cards, super duper rare cards, it's, uh, it's not worth it. It's, and it's a gamble, isn't it? Like anything, if you, uh, if it was a thousand dollars and you got, like, one of every card in the set or something, then, yeah, that'd be cool, but a thousand dollars for 60 cards, and then you've got to hope that you get, like, one of the good ones. Uh, yeah, it's definitely it's not value for money, but it's a collector's thing, so they're only uh, they're only going to increase in value. Well, maybe. Well, yeah, hopefully. Let's, you can't, let's you can't hope buy so. them from your friendly local game yeah, shop. You, you, you can't you can't buy them at all. They've made oh, right. so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Must have been able to buy them at some oh, point. Yeah, they did. So, so what they did was they uh, they'd made them and then they put them up for sale, and everybody got the opportunity to log on to their website and spend nine hundred and ninety nine dollars on them. Yeah. Yes, and Sharon. It cost a thousand dollars to buy the, the little tiny box. When he brought it home, because he told me about this thousand dollar box thingy. We didn't pay for it. Oh yeah, no, we would never buy. We, did, we didn't pay for it. Good, don't have that much money. <laughs> anyway, um, when he when he told me about it, and then and then I was thinking all sorts of stuff in my head, you know. And then he brought it home, and it's just a tiny little cardboard box. Yeah. I just thought, wow. <laughs> I mean, they could have at least took a, I don't know, a pin badge or something. <laughs> something. <laughs> they could have done something. They could have made it more. Oh, wow! It was literally a tiny little yeah. thick box, wasn't it? Yeah. And it's got four packets of boosted Magic the Gathering cards inside. So it's 60 cards. 60 cards. 60 cards. It's a thousand, a thousand dollars. It's, it's Six, insane. 60 cards. And those 60 cards could be like any one of 500 and something cards, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, you know. Tony says that it was really funny because I had all those cards and I gave them away. Makes me feel better about splurging on minis. A thousand dollars can cover a lot of minis. Yeah, here this we is go. The so box. This, Look how so that's it is. so that's the box. That thousand pounds. That's it. Uh, that's the box. And then it and then it had uh, inside there was like a fancy black box. Uh, and it's not that It's not a thousand dollars. Right, yeah, just just a nice black box. But it you. It's not. If you see the video, you, you can see it. Yeah. So this says, boosters may contain these cards. 30th anniversary, 1 to 594. So there's 60 cards inside here, but it could be any one of almost 600 cards. It is insane. It was nuts. Really, really, really nuts. So, uh, yeah, fortunately, Wizards of the Coast had decided that they were going to send all the stores in the uh, organised play programme one for free and we thought it'd be really cool to, uh, to open it. You want a Pokemon chat at all? So we did. So we did. Uh, and we were one of the first to do it and now there are there are other people more famous and with a lot more um, viewers and stuff doing it now and they're getting like thousands and thousands of views on their video. Like, we did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we're only little and nobody knows who we are. But Mr. MLG was very happy that he actually got to open because he, because he plays magic and he really likes magic. Yeah. And there would never be, in a million years, a chance for him to open such a such an item. Um, so he was he was very happy and giddy. And he was, you were very nervous at the beginning of the video. There was, yeah. You didn't, you didn't really know if you should and what to do and yeah it was good it was very very exciting very tense and we got we got cards that i was uh I, I, we didn't get any like wow
wildly expensive things. Well, we actually. We have, oh, we have, we, I have put the last video on you, the last pack. Yeah. So the so the so the card out of the first pack, um, the tundra that we got, that's in the old border style. So when I uh, when I got to the shop uh, and talked to Ross about it, we had, we had a quick look on. Who card also plays magic. Yeah. So we had a quick look on card market because I hadn't found the value listed for it. And the only person that's selling a copy of that card is selling it for five grand. Oh, but there's a difference between selling it for five grand and somebody wanting to buy it. I know, but that's the only person that's even got one for sale. Wow. That's just, it's just a bit bad art. <laughs> it's nuts. But uh, I'm not selling it. Sharon so. says, I was recently watching a program where they do those auctions of rare items. It's kind of crazy what certain things are valued around the world, especially for collectors. It is. Oh, it is. Oh, the dog might have tripped. And you never... You never know, do you? Because you go like, oh, you used to have one of those. But if you saved everything that you've ever owned just in case it became a collector's item, you, you'd have no room in your house. No. You'd be a hoarder, wouldn't you? That's, that's what you'd be. Yeah. yeah. I, I've never had anything of any value. Apart from you, my dad. I've never had any items of any value. I've never had anything left to me in a will or anything like that. We've never, we've never had anything in our family to be passed down. So I don't know how that feels to uh, the people who purchased the house down the road um, that some of my family members looked at but didn't purchase. Found some more cross vases in the loft. Mm. It's like oh, oh, we didn't buy that house, but yeah. you know, somebody else came along and purchased the house and found these things. Nothing like that's ever happened to us. So, uh, you know, we just have to plod along as we are, don't we? on all our videos for people that uh, are hard of hearing or, or don't listen to videos with sound I always try, try my very best to put subtitles on I know that um, YouTube does automatic subtitles but uh, the way that we talk it, it once said that Mr MLG worked at McDonald's uh, because he didn't understand mm. what he lands the games so um, they're not always very accurate so I do try and put them on when I can I try my bestest to incorporate everyone so everyone can enjoy. I'm now regretting, Sister Anita, throwing out all the boxes of my old chessy dice <laughs> just in case you had some. Yeah. Yeah. We need to empty the loft uh, before we sell, before we get rid of the bag. We need to empty the loft. So you never know. Well, I do know because I know there's no treasures yeah. up there. But let's keep our fingers crossed that there's some extremely rare thing that we've completely forgotten about. <laughs> we, we, we've got a rare thing that we didn't. You don't even know where it really came from. We've got the Panasonic 3DO with the super rare, super awesome controller that that fella was really excited about. I know, and we were going to sell it to him, and then we forgot. Yeah. <laughs> That's how good we are. Didn't we? Yeah. That, poor, that poor mister. But he never got in touch, did he? I don't yeah. think he really wanted it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why we put that now. Did it go back in the wash? Yeah, it's uh, it's in a, sealed in a um, box, so it can't get moisture in it and stuff. Vicky Lee says I've watched a few streams where they have subtitles. Yeah, I don't put them on. I can't put them on the stream ones. It'd take me a decade. So sorry about that. Uh, and there are quite a few funny lines that come out. It's because it doesn't understand our accent. That's the, that's the problem. We don't understand what we're saying. Well, if you have some old Cheswick dice, I could easily find out the ones which are worth something. They're mostly just brought glittery ones. I have not changed at all. The glittery ones are the best, that's why. <laughs> the glittery ones are the best. I picked some um, in, in, inclusion, is that what they're called? Entombed. In, entombed dice today for an order. Uh, they have little boats inside them. So you're painting this Sasha sail for the RCL, aren't you? That's right. With me and Sharon. What colours have you chosen? Uh, so it's going to be like snot green and uh, red on the uh, on the shell. Snot green and red. Snot green and red with it with a striping of black. What is that red brown colour that you're using there? Uh, oh, so uh, I've mixed it <laughs> from. Yeah. yeah, I need to be. I need to be more over there. Uh, so I mixed it from rusty red and black indigo. Because rusty red was a little too bright, so I, I wanted to go in with something darker to start off with. Music's a bit loud. It's not loud, is it? It's a song, perhaps. It's raining now, so I definitely can't hear anything <coughs> apart from the rain. Is that better? I've turned it down. Hopefully. Just using a random WizKids paintbrush that came out of one of the paint sets this evening. Right. Oh, and then oh, missed missed all these like thrashery bally bits. They're, they're supposed to be red. Why did you choose black indigo over pure black? Uh, I don't know. I thought I thought because it had like a little bit of bluey purpleness to it. I thought it might make it a bit more interesting in the red. Gizmo's tired out after a day of running up and down stairs, looking at people out the window. Yeah, he was having a great time this afternoon, wasn't he? Chasing him, he was chasing his own toy around, like that he was throwing himself. It was... You know your wife was throwing himself. Not all the time. Yeah. Yeah, wh when we were doing the paint, I was playing yeah. fetch with the dog with his toy. Oh, I thought he was throwing it. No. And then, and then running after it. No, that was your wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> uh, okay, sorry, thought I was missing a technical tip there. Oh, you've met us, haven't you, Wicked We don't do technical tips. You have to be technical to do technical tips. We just have a go. Just experiment and see what you think. As we have always said, we, we just enjoy, enjoy the hobby. Um, there's no technicalities. Yeah, people, some people take things too serious. Yeah, nobody wants to be doing that. What did we do yesterday? Uh, what did we do yesterday? Uh, I, re I remember not getting a lot of sleep. You might want to elaborate. You can't just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do yesterday? Well, I didn't get a lot of sleep. No, we, we drove to the other coast and we went to the safari park. That's what, what we did. did. We do? What did we do at the safari park? We... we... fed a tiger. We fed a tiger. We did. It was really super cool. Yep. It was... Um, sure was. A birthday treat for Little Miss. Yep. 
It was awesome. Tiger experience. So the lady told us all about tigers. And then we got to feed a real life massive. It was huge. One of the biggest wild cats. Um, yeah. And the, never going to be that close to a tiger again in my life. <laughs> Tried to eat Mr. MLG. It was quite funny. Yeah. We were in no danger, it, obviously. It the health and safety it. was extreme, uh, and the zoo took all those things extremely seriously. But Mr. MLG decided he was going to walk to the other side of the keeper. Again, in no danger whatsoever, health and safety was top priority. But the tiger didn't like the fact that Mr. MLG had moved slightly away from the keeper. Uh, so ran up and went up on its back legs with its front paws in the air and snarled and growled yeah. at him. Did, and Mr. Did, MLG did his best. Did, didn't like me. <laughs> it didn't like me. It didn't like it at all. <laughs> but it was awesome. If, if you it ever was. get the opportunity to, to do such things, I would recommend it. It was very, very cool. It was ace. Best day out ever. Very, very cool. Yeah, we, we, we were living our best life through our daughter's birthday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was super good. Super good. Yeah. And then obviously went around the safari park and stuff. Um, there was a baboon. You can go through the baboons in your car. Yep. So we gave Mr. MLG the, the choice because after all, it's you know, it's the family car, but it's it's his car, he drives the car, and it's it's new to us car. Um so we gave him the choice and he queued up to go through the baboons and we were just gonna go through and what happened to you? Uh, so <laughs> we were yeah, we were like one car away from going in and then I saw a Range Rover come out on the other side that had been absolutely wrecked. And I changed my mind, I bottled out, and we went, we turned around. The, 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 keep, the keeper lady went, have you changed your mind? And he went, yeah, yes. yeah, please let me out. <laughs> but the, it didn't have wing mirrors, and it had the, a big dent in the roof. The, and, all, and all the rubber things, the strips along the top of the roof were just trailing behind this car. It was absolutely yeah. wrecked. And I don't think our car's got that many Trainy bits on it, but I didn't it wasn't really worth the risk. It wasn't worth the risk. So we so we went round the outside, round the outside, where you can look, still see the baboons, and laugh at everybody else going through. And we spent quite a long time sat there laughing at everybody else having their cars zipped in bits. Just yeah. The, so when we've been in the past, we've been we've not been for tiger experiences in the past. But when we've been to the safari park in the past, oh yeah, the tiger experience was super special. We've uh, we've always gone through the baboon thing, but this time something must have changed because now the sign says these baboons will damage your car. Yes, en used to say enter, might. Yeah, en enter at your own risk. Um, no car parts retrieved. Yeah, that was yeah, that's another one. So uh, yeah, we we pulled up alongside the fence and just watched other people's cars getting wrecked. Oh wow! Uh, Look at that creepy Pokemon that's in chat. Sorry, mm. that Pokemon is really strange. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, baboons just ripping off wing mirrors and yeah, all yeah, other bits of well. trim and trying to chomp number plates off and all sorts of stuff. I can't find my sofa. Uh, okay, says we went in there a week after I had got my car and they pulled off so much and ate my brake lights. <laughs> Creeper says, oh no, never go near baboons, those things are scary. Yeah, they were really, uh, they were, <laughs> they were really hyper and they had lots, there was loads of them and they had lots of babies and they were yeah. just wrecking anything that went through. It was insane. There was a, there was a people carrier looking thing and they just tore a, a whole chunk off the roof and just left it, <laughs> just left it behind. It was just lying on the ground. I'm like, yep, yeah, I'm, I'm glad we didn't go through now. <laughs> oh, I, didn't, I didn't give you the, the thing. Uh, I can't uh, find my sofa. Where's the sofa? 
I don't know. Oh, I, I thought it was in there, darling. Oh, you've been live woman. You know. If it's not in there, it might be in my drawer. I'll find it for you after the stream. Okay. And I, I did. I did say, didn't I, that if, if I have mis like misremembered that we've got loads in the shop. But I'm sure we've got an innkeeper. Well, I thought, I, thought I'd see, I thought I'd seen it, to be fair. It's, it's in a, just a bag. Yeah, it's in a bag. Just a little plastic it's bag. Not, yeah, I know it's not in the box. Anyway. Oh, I'm going to get some more of this stuff. Oh, Tony and Bethusa's caught the weird, uh, weird Pokemon with the giant eyes. Noivern. Tipped them out now, so have a look. So yes, absolutely, if you get the opportunity to do the, the tiger experience, it's really super cool. Um, like I say, we, we only did it for Little Miss and she and she thought it was really cool. Apart from she did equally weigh it up with going in the gift shop, so um, yeah. it might have been slightly Mon lost on her. M <laughs> money well spent, money well spent. In a lifetime. But it was really cool because what the uh, one of the things that the keeper said was that so so much of the money that you pay for going and doing this cool experience goes to actually like a proper charity that have a facility to uh, help tigers in the wild and stuff and that was really interesting when they were telling us about that. So yeah, it was good. It was super good. Yeah. There may be a video um, at some point. Not of Little Miss feeding them, but of the tiger and things. Yeah. If I ever get around to doing it, about it. It was ace. And then, and then after we'd done our little bit with the uh, with the tiger, so we... Because you have so much time to go and do it in like an hour. And then, but most uh, of that's talking. Yeah, most of that's talky talky. And then after that, the uh, the keepers told us what they were going to do, and then we just got to sit and wait and watch Tiger come out into the main enclosure before he got too warm and just went and hid for the rest of the day. Which is what we normally get to see when we go to the zoo. It's just a, a, some grass and like maybe, honestly, maybe honestly, the, the tiger's tail. in here. We drove through the lion enclosure in around the uh, on the safari bit, and they were all just asleep. Right, it's warm. Yeah. Most things were just asleep, apart from the deer. There's always a yeah. million deer. Yeah, there was loads of them. But no, it was super good. So that's what we did. A long way to go, uh, but yeah. And then we went to Pizza Express. The most expensive. Which is ridiculous. Pizza shop in the world. And the last time we went to a pizza, pizza express was a good few years ago and I remember it was in Beverly Yeah. and I remember coming out, your brother had suggested it so we just went along and I remember coming out and thinking I'm never going in a pizza express again that was extortionately priced for what you got but we had to stop somewhere on the motorway for something to eat and Little Miss wanted pizza and we knew there was a pizza hut but when we actually got to the place the Pizza Hut was no longer there, closed down, but there was a Pizza Express. And you know when you just forget, and yeah. you're hungry and you're tired, and you just forget that that you really don't want to be going in there. And we went in and spent the stupid amount of money on a basically a hot cheese sandwich because they only have margarita pizza. And uh, yeah, it was insane. I, I had some <laughs> polenta chips. Yeah, I don't know why. I wanted to try them, see what, what they were what like. What did you reckon? Yeah, I wouldn't bother having them again. They just tasted like uncooked croquettes. <laughs> <laughs> like, you just, like cheap ones you used to get. <laughs> so yeah, that's what we did at the weekend. And then obviously it's Bank Holiday Monday today, but we're just at work. Yeah. So nothing exciting happening there. Well, I have moved some stuff around in the shop just to, just to make Pete happy, because I know how much he likes it when I move stuff around in the shop. Don't, don't you, Pete? You think it's ace. Um, so I've moved some board games just from one shop, um, one the shelf to another to try and make them a little bit more organised. And I have removed an Airfix stand that didn't really have a lot on it and was taking up too much room and put those things with the other Airfix things. Exciting times. Yeah, it made, made some space. It's good. Polenta is 
awesome says Sharon not sure about the pizza hut one though yeah they, they were like they were pizza express polenta chips they were just odd <laughs> yeah yeah it was a bit weird it's evil that's what it is says Pete no it's not Pete hey Battlebane how you doing so yeah moving stuff around just w- to make it easier to find I was I was waiting for you while you were getting cross with the board games for not fitting on the shelves yeah I was waiting for you to utter we need a bigger shop well I wouldn't you, because we don't need a bigger <laughs> shop but you didn't I say didn't, it. No, I, what, I, what I needed them to, was the all board game manufacturers make board games yeah. the same smegging size. Or make their expansions the same height as the main game. Why have you yeah. made that expansion tall and thin, but your main game's fat and square? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Gizmo's been looking out the window at everybody and noticing all the other doggies walking past and this is why he's so tired now i mean look at him you'd think that he'd done something you'd think he'd worked super hard but he hasn't he's just been staring out of a window and finding stuff to eat that he shouldn't eat and bringing it to me and going i'm tidying up mum look <laughs> look at those little legs he looks he looks his legs look weird look like a greyhound or something they look all skinny and spindly some kind of evil creature's hand. <laughs> so there you go. We are going to be moving the shop around properly soon, Pete. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, just new, for you. New, new move around Mark Two. Yeah. We better move around this time, I think. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Nothing ever goes to plan, obviously. And then we need to sort out the homewares because that's a bit of a mess. But currently, we need to finish um, sorting out the stock room upstairs. There's so much to do, and not enough time to do it. So we have booked the babysitter so that we can go and work one night through the night to try and get the big move sorted. You have to move me late. Pando is sad. I don't know why Pando is sad. Maybe it's all that talk about us feeding tigers. So it, it was an Amur tiger. That's right. Which are also called Siberian tigers, which I've actually heard of. Oh, I didn't know that. So I don't know why you call it an Amur tiger. I've never heard of those, but I've heard of a Siberian tiger. Oh, <laughs> oh and now Pando's asleep, dreaming of hobby. Proper, proper term for it, I guess. Yeah, probably. I did think it was a bit strange when I googled it to find out something out and was like, ah, I've heard of that one, but I haven't heard mm. of that one. Super, super cool. I've painted my uh, snail. It's up, it's up there. And I've also done my bats, which Sharon has very kindly um, submitted. And I just need to find something. It's because there are none left in Siberia. Yes, there's only something like 200 left at all, like in the wild. Uh, it's, uh, it's terrible, isn't it? Yes, humans are rubbish. We agree. It's, all, it's always our fault. Which is why when the lady said, the keeper said, that some of the money that we've paid for the experience actually went towards when the tigers are cruelly trapped um, in the wild because the people that live nearby either want to use bits of them or don't like them, and they leave the snares, then this, this charity uh, specialises in rescuing them and treating them and getting them back out into the wild and if they can't go back out into the wild because they're too injured then they um, end up in the breeding program to try and help bring them back yeah so uh, that was that was good that they weren't just you know paying for some thing in the zoo which is which is good too obviously because they're looking after those ones but uh, but it also went towards the actual wild ones so that was cool because we didn't know that when we booked Tony yeah. agrees that humans are rubbish, they avoid them at all costs. Yeah, I try. <laughs> My dad said to me the other day, well, you never used to go to the shop on a Monday. And I'm like, yeah, but it's shut now, Dad, so there's nobody there. <laughs> white tigers are one of my favourite animals. Are white tigers proper? Like, that sounds like a really... St- and I'm, it's a genuine question, I don't know. Uh, I are, don't know. Are they, like... Um, They're naturally Naturally, occurring. yeah. Or, or were they like bred weird? <laughs> Is it just that they live in snowy bits and that's why they're white? 
or are they not really supposed to be there like ligers? Is it care for the wild? I have an I have an adopted snow leopard from them. I don't know, I can't remember what she Yeah, I can't We got so giddy about seeing the tiger, some of the information just fell out of our heads. Yeah. They have like a, a big a big truck. Yeah. Um, like a, a really massive truck that so they've... like a mobile veterinary practice mm, they've done all out and they've got all this equipment and things and then they they drive to these places that they obviously know are, are, are really bad for poachers and hunters and these snares that they put that get their paws um, and they go and they live out there because it's got beds and stuff in this truck just specifically to help those tigers so um, if, if it's if care for the wild have got that kind of thing then it possibly could be pete wants us to hydrate because he's fed up of me talking hydrate everyone i'm just going to do this bit in the north and battlebane thinks it's a mutation yes that's, that's a much better way of putting it than i did battlebane <laughs> white tigers are super rare in the wild says Aniki, but all the captive ones are very inbred and not very healthy it's very sad but they are beautiful Maybe that's what was in my head, some, that, that kind of thing, Kuniko. I'm sure I'd heard something, and that's probably what it was. Uh, yeah. That was something that she said about the, the tiger that we saw um, is like not being bred from captive tigers. So he's. Uh, His mummy and daddy were wild. Yeah, so he's very important for the breeding program. That was the tiger. It was awesome. Really, really, really awesome. Um, any, any hobby talking? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've just had a, a, a one of them brainwave thinking that I knew where your sofa was. Ah. Thank you. She's in a little bag. Oh, I've still got this to paint. What? I've never painted that. That might be always wanted to paint. Just, well, show people, no one can see what you're looking at. It's it, just a it, soda machine. I know, but it's like a cool vending machine that I've wanted to paint for ages. And he's just popped it back in his drawer, everyone. I'll anyway, probably, yeah, probably never all, come all, out again. always wanted to paint July, isn't it? Uh, I can't remember. Yes, they are genetic mutations, so super right, rare. So and as Kanuka said, they're inbred, which is sad. That's going to have to go over there until the green dries. So, should we do a bit of crocodile while we're waiting? Yeah, dire, yeah, dire crocodile. So, this month's great MLG brush off is Fantasy Creatures. Uh, it's the 8th and I haven't even thought about what Fantasy Creatures I'm going to do yet. I don't know where... I was thinking about contrasting in this guy, but now I've got him in my hand up. Battlebane hasn't been able to do any hobby as they've packed up for a move. Ooh, ah, no. move. And yeah. Shannon's just typing random stuff in chat and then going, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was cleaning the keyboard. <laughs> you lie. Yeah. When when is the big move, Battlebane? Is it is it like imminent? There's a, a wild, scared looking cormorant in, in chat. Like going, oh, I stand really still, but don't blink. <coughs> no one will know I'm here. Huh. End of this month ish. Um, I suppose you know all about big moves. Yeah. Uh, Battlebane has mentioned it to me. This soap is just covered in mordor moss. Have you got your little knife, sweetie? Because mine's too big to fit in. I have no, started making my creature for the brush off. Got a while before it's ready to paint now. Oh, well, that sounds oh, awesome. Oh, cut yourself. I won't. On purpose, anyway. One of our cats, as Kuniko, loves watching Animal Park on the BBC and gets very excited when the tigers are featured. He obviously has delusions of grandeur. <laughs> what have you got to tell us? Um. If you don't want me talking while I'm using a knife, you should tell me off when I was concentrating. <laughs> uh, so, seeing as I've got a limited amount of greens on my uh, on my paint rack here, you know there's I, a million over here. I know, I know, but uh, they're all in the cupboard without me getting up and selecting one and stuff. So we're going to go with some uh, some heavy black green again as a base coat for our 
crocodile. And then what I intend to do is put a, a dirty black green wash over the top of it to darken it down. My dog gets very confused by cats. He sees one and has a bit of a malfunction. Yes, uh, Gizmo has never really seen one. So when there was one in the garden the other day, uh, because they use them to cross to the next bit of garden, he just looks at me as if to say, what, what's, what's, what's that thing there, Mum? <laughs> what's that thing supposed <laughs> to be? Is that supposed to be in our garden? That doesn't look like a bird. <laughs> Do you reckon that cats know they're related to tigers? Said Wicked D. Probably. I mean, they're quite snooty of cats, aren't they? So they probably know. And even if they didn't know, they'd probably say that they knew because they're not going to admit that they don't. Yeah, I reckon. That, uh, that the tiger that we saw was ace. He just he just laid there, didn't he? He was just like, oh, who are you? You're not important yeah, to me. Just, what is important to me is food. <laughs> Oh, you've got some of that. Excellent. He was, uh, he was super cool. And I can totally understand why uh, people get a bit drawn in and decide that they're going to climb over the fence and go and give them a stroke and stuff because they're really mm. soft and snuggly. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was him being silly. We do not recommend that. <laughs> no, not at all. It was odd. Ooh. <laughs> that was that was what I did when it jumped up. <laughs> oh, bit bit like that noise that Gizzy just made at me, but louder. I'm gonna snore him now. Yeah. Boy. It's a hard life, you know. Got what else you got to tell us? Panda wants to know if you all like the stream. That's nice, Panda. Thank Tigers are cool, but not as cool as honey badgers, in my opinion. Well, we haven't fed a honey badger, so they're quite vicious, though, aren't they, honey badgers? Is it, is it those things that are quite vicious? Uh, yeah, honey badgers are, uh, like, just crazy. Is they'll, that what Taz is they'll take, after? They'll take on... Um, What's her name? No, there is, there is actually a Tasmanian devil actual creature. Oh, is it? Oh, OK. Yeah. Um, yeah, honey badgers are, are insane. They, <laughs> they can get bitten by snakes and then just go and have a bit of a sleep and come back. And uh, and they, I've seen a video of one taking on a lion, which was a bit crazy. All the lions I've ever seen were just lazy. <laughs> yeah, they're nuts. Mm. We actually fed a tiger. <laughs> actually fed a tiger. We, we were we were within reaching distance of getting our fingers chomped off. Well, we weren't because we were following yeah. the health and safety. Yes, yeah. We yeah. were not but, silly uh, sausages. But, but if anybody was stupid enough to put their fingers through the uh, mesh, that was the end of that. that was, <laughs> yeah, that's that's your own stupid policy. Queen Ica says honey badgers don't back down because their stubby little legs are not made for speed. <laughs> Yeah. Albain says they fight lions and have killed male ones by removing their private areas. Oh, lovely. Lovely. That's that's nice. Well, I suppose, you know, they, they know which bits to go for. Yeah. My, my Sophie has a hole in her elbow. Like she's been working so hard that she's worn it away. <laughs> One of the uh, one of the guys in our little poker circle that I occasionally play with uh, is often referred to as the honey badger because he doesn't like backing down from when he's uh, put chips in the pot. And he has a T-shirt that says "Honey badger just don't care." <laughs> All right then. Mm. Tasmanian devil is a marsupial, so related to koalas, possums, and wombat. Are you googling stuff, wicked D? <laughs> or is that just all in your brain already? Um, swatting up, ready for that next pub quiz. 
There we go. Dire, dire uh, crocodile is underway. It's very green. It's very green. Oh, look, and when you, when you stick her arm on, her elbow sticks out so you can see the big hole in it. That's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> no, I knew that already. Just had to check how to spell marsupial. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Sophie. What does, what does innkeeper Sophie look like in other people's lives? Yeah, let's mix up a little bit more of this red. I'm, li I'm liking the red. So we'll get a little bit more rusty red and we'll just make it just that shade darker than the stuff that we've already used. And then I might get an actual proper paintbrush for some precision painting rather than just the junk ones. So. We know a guy called Honey Badger too, says Koniki. But it's because he's an angry muppet that never knows when to back down. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh dog, you are making some strange looking noises. Have you got the black Right, now yes, my darling, I have indeed. Thank you very much. Right, I think we're going to use this one. That's there a nice coloured shell you've got going on. Yeah, I'm going to make it a little bit brighter in a second. Not a lot brighter, but a little bit brighter. I'm going to try out a new brush. I haven't used this one yet. This is a Rosemary & Co. Series 22, uh, size 2. Which has got a beautiful uh, long bristle. on the box I thought oh that'll be sweet and then when I looked at it it's absolutely ginormous there are big circles that all connect together with string obviously to make bunting um, and they're bigger than my plates um, than my mats that we have on the kitchen table and they're huge I think I might have to put it up in the window because uh, I think if we put it anywhere in the shop it's going to block out stock <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, uh, but we never got around to it, did we? No, because I, I uh, distracted you, didn't I? Uh, doing the layout. Oh, yeah, you made me do some more, didn't yeah. And I was playing fetch with the dog and you didn't realise. Yeah. You thought that he was playing fetch with himself. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah, we, <laughs> we did, a, did a massive order of Vallejo paint because there's loads uh, of gaps. You need to do your paint. On the map. We need to do loads of things. Well, but we can do Reef tomorrow night after we've, oh, had, a, after we've so had a night off this evening. You're so good. Well, what, what are you planning on doing this evening? Are you playing Skyrim or are you watching the telly? Yeah. I haven't actually got anything to watch. Yeah, I thought we'd watch that Magpie Murders thing. Oh, has anybody else seen that Magpie Murders thing? We've watched two episodes, is it? Yeah. Two episodes? It's just getting started, really. See what it's uh, see what happens. I've stopped watching Angel, so I like Buffy, yeah. yeah, I like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and I don't think that um, there will be any spoilers in this, seeing as how they're all 25 million years old. But I've never seen Angel before because I don't like the character Angel. I think he's annoying. But seeing as I've run out of stuff to watch, I decided to give it a go, and then he's had a baby. So I've given up on that now because that's a load of nonsense. Uh, so now I've gone back to watching Warehouse 13 because I've forgotten I'd started watching that. And then <laughs> me and Mr. MLG are watching this Magpie Murders thing to see what that's all about. We don't watch a lot of telly uh, because we don't get a lot of time. But equally, there isn't a lot that we really want to watch. We do struggle to find stuff to watch. I tend to watch television on a Thursday and Friday night while I'm waiting for this one to roll in at one o'clock in the morning from work. Um, but equally, can't watch things that we watch together without him. So, 
for Raw Slate. Now I know you're all shouting, sort out the Magic the Gathering cards that you've still not finished yet. And I'm like, yeah, I will. One minute. <laughs> yeah, that is that is what you said you were going to do when I you know, when I you know. asked me to bring them home. I know, and I, ha and I will, I, ha I will, but I hurt my eye, and uh, and it was really sore. For, for, I, don't, I don't know why. It's not like I had a random blister on it like I did last time. It was just really sore, like someone punched me in the face, but there was absolutely nothing there. You know how annoying that is when something really, really, really hurts and there's not even a scratch? Yeah, if there I, was a, I do. Like, that's how my leg was last week, in the week before. If there was a scratch or something, you could at least go like, not there, there was nothing. The difference between my eye and your leg, Dan, is, is I asked you every single day how your leg felt. I strapped it up for you. I put it up on pillars while you were sleeping. I moisturised your legs and washed your feet for you. And I went and got you a stick. <laughs> and then when none of that really helped, I made you make an appointment at the doctor's. The difference between that and my eye is you haven't even asked me if my eye is all right. Because this is the first time you've mentioned it in two weeks. <laughs> well, that's because I shouldn't have to keep mentioning it, should I? I shouldn't have to keep going, my eye still hurts. Because the last I feel, I feel like Leonard. Yeah, my, my leg hurts like Frosty. <laughs> The last time I asked you if your eye was alright, you went, yeah. <laughs> well, I won't have done that, will I? Because it wasn't. <laughs> so no, it would have been the answer. So I thought to myself, well, if it's alright, I'll think, stop asking. I think you must have asked someone else because it, it wasn't, it really hurt. <laughs> I even wore an eye patch when you weren't here. Did you? Yep, to rest it because it really hurt. <laughs> So, so whatever, whoever you asked about their eye being okay was It was you. It was you. I asked you if your eye was alright. Is your eye alright? Yeah. No. <laughs> and Battlefay says, uh, had my dog in a grump as I didn't share my chocolate bar with him. And they say lurches are smart. I don't know, ours weren't very yeah. smart. Our, our sight dog was uh, wasn't smart at all. Ch chocolate's bad for dogs. Well, I think that's what Battlefay means. Like, yeah. Yeah. He wouldn't give it to his dog because he's not good for it. Veronica says, Wear washing sitted at. Oh, I've had her. I've seen an advert. Oh, I heard an advert. Uh, it was I on the radio, see, oh, wasn't it? I was going to say, I didn't see an advert. I heard an advert. I wonder where that was, but that makes sense. It was on the radio. That, that shows it. Uh, sorry. Wear washing sitted out. Richard Madden. I don't know how you spell that. He's very fine. Um, he's, a, he's, a, he's a good actor. <laughs> I don't know who he is. Uh, we've been watching Sweet Tooth. Says Tony, oh, I saw a tiny bit of that and I don't think I like that, Tony. You know how weird I am. Uh, Tony says his sweet tooth is really good. Vicky D says, no spoilers, Tony, please. Uh, don't you ask if she's okay in general every day anyway? Y yeah. No, but he doesn't know. But I do, though. He does that thing, yeah. you know, where, where they ask but they don't actually. It's just, it's just part of talking. It's not actually asking if you're okay. Yeah. It's just like saying good morning to somebody. Yeah. He, does, yeah. he does that. That's yeah. what he does. No, I no ask spoilers, you. I promise, other than it's really good. And Panda would like some love in chat. Because Panda is wanting Mr. Manager to stop being a big man and spread some love instead. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a deranged squirrel in chat. Um, I, don't, I don't know what's happening with that. Girl. It's like you've got two tails and some giraffe horns, which have got a stupid name, haven't they? Can you remember what the giraffe horns are called? Sounds like, Ice cream. Sounds like oh. Honeycomb. On Onicom or something like that. Yeah, on it, Onicom. 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 It's cool. So what, what colour are you highlighting it up with now? Then? This is uh, this is rusty red with a little bit of the darker rusty red mix that I made mixed into it. That looks really good. I, I just got so confused with my snail. I didn't know what to do with the silly thing at all. It got painted three times. Not not to a high standard, obviously. Um, I, just, I just couldn't figure out what to do with it. And in the end, I just went to my normal, let's do it dark. <laughs> I did put some um, chrome paint on it, but you can't see that at all um, in the picture. 
don't know where it's gone in the picture um because we had a chrome it was chrome for airbrush and i don't have an airbrush so i painted it on which apparently you're not supposed to do with the airbrush one um but it had broken in transit so we had it here i said i thought i'd give it a go but it was i mean the chrome paint looked awesome it was very shiny very chromey just like my uh beetle bumpers Oh, looks really good. Um, Thank you. Tony caught the squirrel that's seen things. Is it is it like a uh, Vietnam veteran? You weren't there, man. You weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think I should leave the shell at that, or do you think I should try and go like a little bit lighter? I think it looks really natural at that. What are you doing to the green? I was just gonna like highlight it just a touch. So why don't you finish the green? Because it's still wet. Oh, why don't you wait until it dries and finish the green, yeah. and then it might give you a better idea of your feelings on the red, because it'll look completely different. When and you've only got, I don't know, four minutes. Okay, well let's move on to, um, I think the green. So what's the green you've used on the tail and the crocodile? So the, the crocodile is heavy black green from Vallejo, which is what I used as the base before I mixed some slate grey into it. There's some stretchy paws there. This, this colour here, so this is heavy black green in this pot. The, the dark green and this is heavy black green with some green stuff world slate grey mixed into it which is what I used as the base coat for uh, the green for the snail and then I applied Creed, ca Creed Camo um, over the top of it which is a contrast coat for making it into this nice darky green for left. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to put uh, we're going to mix up a black green wash to go over the top of our dire crocodile. Four. No, because that's two. Right? That's two. Right? So I'm going to get a little bit of this and a little bit of black and we're going to mix them together. A little bit of Monica in my life. Take this, uh, take this pipette. Yeah. 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 Proper, proper childish sucking up water and then uh, squirting it back out. <laughs> baby. Yep. So I'm going to get that and then we're going to get uh, a little bit of null oil. I've only got a couple of minutes. I know. What was that? About the name, in, name of the king? <sighs> Kleenica says that the squirrel had the face of what Kleenica looked like after watching the name of the king. And Tony said that was worse than alone in the dark. The Kalinika says, do not speak its name. Vicky D says, you can't use a pipette without doing that. It's the law. It is. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> is, in the name of the king, is that the one with Jason Statham in where his character is just called Farmer? Right. So we've mixed this really dark green yes oh. yeah yeah it is terrible and is uh, is it ray liotta is the bad guy yeah. oh do you have any pipettes that size at the shop Raymond? we should have yeah pete the hydrator is juicy juicy should have uh, Tony the uh, green stuff world um, pipettes long dropper 
thingies, I think, yeah? They come in a bag of 50. Uh, <laughs> long dropper thingies. Yeah, long, long dropper, I think it is. Long dropper thingies. I love the steak. It's going to give that thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there a sequel? There's, a, there's an In the Name of the King 2, I think. Absolutely no idea. It also turns out that I can't spell pipette. <laughs> <laughs> Are they called pipette? Yeah. We have so. sold out of the long dropper with such a mobs. We oh. only have the smaller one. We did order some in the last order from Greenstuff World, but that could be a million years away. Yeah. So no. Unfortunately uh, we've only got this we've only got the short ones. I I thought we had some. Uh, unless oh, we've sold unless we've sold them over the weekend. So I will double check tomorrow for you Tony. In case it's wrong. Yeah. I hate Jason Statham. I want to poke him right between his beady little eyes. <laughs> says Wicked D. That's how I feel about Nicholas Cage. <laughs> well, how can you hate someone you've never met? All right then, you just hate hate him in an actor style, uh, not a personal. But if I uh, met him, I'd probably still feel the same. Apparently, uh, um, oh, I've lost my fact now. Apparently, um, what's the guy that did that did Nightmare Before Christmas? Tim Burton. Tim Burton was going to direct a Superman movie in the in the nineties, or, or I think it was late nineties. And um, Nicholas Cage, see this, is my brain is failing now. Nicholas Cage was going to be Superman. So that, that unfortunately, they never made it. That is an abomination. That would never work. He's the same in everything. That's that's right, Karanika. That's what it was going to be called. Yeah. Superman lives. But why would that thought even cross your brain? What to make? Uh, to make him anything I don't know. in any movie ever. There's, <laughs> there's a clip of him from like the eighties or, or early nineties where he's on Wogan and he like <laughs> comes, comes like forward rolling onto the thing, throwing money into the oh, audience. Yeah, I've isn't seen there? That. What a loon. What a loon. <laughs> I can't remember what that thing was that we was in we watched not too long ago. Oh, we've watched, you make me watch all sorts of horrible films that he's in. No, it was <laughs> I can't remember what it was called. It Where he goes to he goes to like a theme park. Uh, yeah, he doesn't talk in that though. Pizza restaurant and he doesn't speak for the entire movie. That's alright, because he doesn't he's talk. Getting, he's getting paid per word or something. Yeah. Know. I bet, I bet Karaniko knows what that is. Yeah. Yeah, the, the film that he doesn't talk and he just kills everything in the theme park. And there's some young teenagers randomly for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> All the animatronics. Willy's Wonderland, on. that's it. See, Willy's I Wonder. knew Karaniko would know. Yeah, Willy's Wonderland. Yeah, he's made me watch that as well. And he was the on fire riding the motorbike dude as well, wasn't he? Yes. Mm. See, he ghost, all, ghost rider. He gets all the good parts and he's rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. It's just the same in everything. You've, got, anyway. you've, you've, you've gone over your time uh, now. I know. So this is tonight's progress. Tonight's progress. Oh, snail shell. The, uh, really good. Thank you. Thrasher snail shell. Um, there we are. Thrasher snail. Uh, Thrasher snail is going to get finished tomorrow. Dire crocodile probably also going to get finished tomorrow. Uh, so, apart from basic, obviously, we might do that Wednesday. But yeah, the, that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to be doing tomorrow. Thank you very much, Wicked D. Thank you, everybody, for uh, for joining us this evening. We'll be back tomorrow for Two Pent Tuesday, and uh, we hope you'll all join us. We'll be here at um, six thirty. Six thirty. That's right. Care, See you all soon. Bye. Bye.